Hey guys, it's Professor Sears. I want to do a real quick video for you on Foley catheter insertion and removal. I should say urinary catheter. Um, so we're going to start with the scale. So you should have already done all of your pre-steps, like verifying your order, explaining the procedure to the patient. Um, and it's really important that you do ask about allergies. So you want to make sure that your patient isn't allergic to latex. A lot of your catheters will contain latex and you need to get a special one that's latex free. You also need to check about iodine and shellfish and about chlorhexidine because these are things that we can commonly use to clean. Today we'll be using betadine. So I've got my sterile package here, so I need to open it. So when I open my sterile field, I always open away from me first so I never have to reach back across my sterile field. I'll open one side, the other side, and towards me. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this over so I have room to put on my sterile gloves here. So I can grab my sterile gloves out of the kit. Now normally you'll put the drape and the fenestrated drape on while you're sterile, but for your checklist, they say that you can go ahead and take this out, be careful not to touch anything else, and go ahead and drape your patient. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sterile gloves on. Hopefully I've got them the right way, I do not. Okay, so you make sure that it doesn't touch your other sterile field. I can touch the inside of the cuff here. I'm going to grab underneath the cuff here so I can slide my hand in. Okay, and then I can touch the inside of this package to move it. I'm going to slide this one back over. Notice how I'm touching the middle of my sterile field. This is your fenestrated drape. You don't have to do this in your checklist, but what we use this for is to drape right over the patient's perineum. And when you do this because you're sterile, you're gonna do just what I kind of showed you where you're like laying it down and letting it go. I don't want my hands to bump my patient. We're not gonna use this today, so I'm just gonna move it. Next, I've gotta set up my kit. So ours has a tray inside it, so I'm gonna take this tray out and just put it next to my kit here. Still on my sterile field though. The first thing you wanna do, um, I have like the swab sticks in mine. You guys have the cotton balls. It doesn't matter either way if you use the swab sticks or the little tongs with the cotton balls, or I should say forceps. Um, you're still going to open the betadine. We're going to simulate so you don't make a mess. Open your betadine, pour it over your cotton balls or your swab sticks. This then becomes trash. Okay. Then I've got to set up everything else in my kit. So I want to open my lubricant. Yours is probably in a syringe and that's fine. So open that, squirt it into your tray. Okay. And then you've also got a syringe with some sterile water or saline in it. And this is to attach to your catheter onto this port here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this. This is what's going to inflate my balloon. So it has 10 milliliters of sterile water in here. Okay, it's just a slip tip. You push it right in. The last thing that I need to do is take this plastic covering off. It's much easier to do while you have two good hands. So I'm going to go ahead and just slide this off. And I want to make sure I don't lose control of the end of the catheter. Because if it flops outside of your sterile field, you've got to start all over again. And remember, I'm sterile right now. I haven't touched anything else. Okay, so I've got everything set up on my kit. Now you can either start with this between your patient's legs or you can move it at this point. So to move it, I would be grabbing kind of the top of the box here and I could set this between my patient's legs. I can also grab inside this kit and set it between my patient's legs as well. I know that's on your checklist. So at this point, I am ready to go ahead and insert. And I'm gonna slide this way just so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so for you guys, you have female insertion. So what that means is that, you know, I've already got my patient. Um, I don't necessarily position them immediately if they can move their own legs. At this point, I'd have them put their, you know, bend their knees up, put their heels towards their buttocks, and then they can abduct their knees. So kind of let their knees fall open. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and spread the labia. 
okay? And then I have to clean. So when I clean, I am right-handed, so I always stand on the right side of my patient. That way when I pick up my catheter, I can just put it right in. So for cleaning, you're always going to clean the side furthest away from you. So you start at the top inside, inside the labia minora, go top to bottom, toss it. We're not scrubbing, you're just doing one swipe. So then I grab my second one, I'm going to go top to bottom in one swipe, trash it, grab my third one, and I'm going to go straight down the middle here. This is where sometimes you'll be able to see the um, urethral meatus kind of wink or blink at you because it'll form like a little bubble over the surface that pops. Okay, and notice that it can never let the labia touch again once I've cleaned. Same thing if you do a male one. You can never set the penis down again because if it touches anything else, it's dirty. You have to clean all over again. So now I'm ready to insert. So I've got my catheter here. You want to hold it about two inches from the end because I have good control of this. I'm going to be able to put it in. If I hold too far away, I'm not going to be able to control it to get it into the urethral meatus. I'm going to go ahead and dip it in my lube. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert it directly in, and I'm going to keep sliding it in. This hand here can never bump into the tissue. It has to stay away from it so it stays sterile. So you kind of have to like feed the catheter in. Once I see urine, I'm going to push it in two more inches. Then I'm going to let go, stabilize with this hand, and then I have to go ahead and inflate the balloon. I'm not actually going to push the water in because that will be a mess. But um, So you would inflate your balloon all 10 milliliters. Then you're going to gently tug this down to make sure it's seated at the base of the bladder. And then you can let go because it's inside. I'm going to go ahead and remove my empty syringe. And then I go into cleanup mode. So I think your checklist has you at this point take off your gloves. You might have betadine on them, whatever. So take off your gloves, do hand hygiene, put on a fresh set of gloves, so just clean gloves. You want to go ahead and do some catheter care and perineal care. Soap and water is fine, or if you have special wipes, you can use that too. The next step is that you are going to go ahead and clean up this area. You usually have like a little sticker in your kit that you can attach to your patient's upper thigh and it's got a little clip that will attach right at this bifurcation here. That way we can secure the catheter so it won't get pulled on and cause damage to the urethra or the bladder. The last thing um, is to make sure you've put your patient's gown back down, covered them back up, lowered the bed, the bed is locked. In the lowest position, they have their call bell in reach. We always do aid it, so you know, ask your patient, is there anything I can get for you? Thank them for their time. Again, all of this had to be cleaned up. Then we'll wash our hands one more time out the door. The only difference I want to point out for male insertion is that when I'm holding the penis to clean and I have my three swabs, you're starting at the urethral opening, you're circling around the glands of the penis, so away, throw it away, pick up the next one, you do the exact same thing. So start right at the urethral meatus, circling away, and one more. And then when you go to insert your catheter, I'm dipping this into the lubricant, and then I'm going to go ahead and insert and for male patients, when you see urine, keep inserting. You should actually go all the way down to the bifurcation right here where it splits into your port. And then go ahead, you know, you have your syringe on here, inflate your balloon, and then you can just tug it back down until it's sitting at the base of the bladder. This is because their urethra is much longer and we don't want to accidentally cause some trauma. Okay, so let's say my patient, I inserted the catheter, so this is inside my patient right now, okay, and I have an order to remove it. You do want to make sure that you get like a chucks pad and tuck it under your patient, some kind of absorbent pad. That way, if there's urine that dribbles out of the catheter at the end, it's not going to get on the bed, save you some time that you don't have to do a linen change as well. So, of course, verify your order, let your patient know what's going on. You do want to prepare first. So this urine drain bag, I should have told you earlier, make sure you hang it below the level of your patient on the bed, on a non-movable part of the bed, and you don't want any dependent loops. So this loop 
right here, this up and down loop, this is bad. But if I turn it sideways on the bed, that's okay. I always want the yarn to be moving downward. I don't ever want it to have to fight back up against gravity because it can't. So it's gonna sit in the tube and grow bacteria. So I've got my bag. I wanna go ahead You've got a little drain at the bottom of your bag here. You want to drain your bag before you empty it. It just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I've drained my bag. I measured my urine. I dumped it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this catheter now. So I need an empty syringe now. I'm going to attach it onto this port. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to, usually it'll start to backfill on its own. If it does not, just give this a little tug and it'll start to go. It may take 30 seconds to a minute though, that's normal. If you pull back really hard, it might collapse this lumen here and then no matter how hard you pull, you can't get all of the, the fluid out of the balloon here and we can cause damage as we remove it. All right, so now my syringe is filled. I can go ahead and disconnect this. We're going to go ahead and tell our patient to take some few deep breaths, and as they exhale, I can slowly slide this out. Again, I kind of keep control of the tip so that it's not flopping all over and we're not dribbling urine. So at this point, I can go ahead and discard this. I do want to offer my patient perineal care again to just clean. Um, and at this point, um, that's about it. It's going to be your safety checks again. So those are kind of the key things that we are looking for during your checkoff. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that was very informative for you guys. You can always shoot me an email if you have questions, but thank you. Um, and I'll get this out to you.